Welcome back everyone to another Company of Heroes 2 replay cast and this time we are back after a while and we're gonna have a 2v2 on uh, Crossing in the Woods of course it took me a while to remember the map's name I believe it was uploaded to Kotu.org by the lieutenant who requested a bit of a cast so happy to oblige uh, his friend is gonna be re D rank company playing as the Brits and on the enemy team, we're gonna have Conzio and Mateus. So double OKW with lots of cubo wagons coming in. Already double cubo wagon from Conzio. Hold on, I need to. I think my sound's way too high. Good. Uh, should be. Should be hearing me now. There we are. So. Uh, I'm just gonna lower it a little bit further. Sorry. Because. Okay, this should be enough. Now, uh, double cubo wagon on crossing in the woods is a little bit too much, but yeah, double OKW on crossing in the woods is overall going to be very annoying for the allies to deal with. So we already have double engineers from the lieutenant who went for special rifle command, of course, and he is going for some penals right off the bat, which are going to help him in the early game. And yeah, he's AFK actually. There's no units coming through for our bread player. That's uh, kind of unfortunate for the lieutenant. We'll see how that develops. And of course, Mateus is playing down his own skill. We'll see if he's correct or not. I mean, first engagement, we're gonna see on the left hand side some combat engineers gonna fight some stern pioneers. Not a good idea, and they realize this very quickly after, unfortunately, one of their buddies goes down at medium range to the SDGs. And in the center, we see some combat engineers capturing the middle VP, but the right side is OKW territory through and through. Of course, because of two cube wagons versus an AFK player. AFK player, which now wakes up and goes for a Vickers machine gun plus a universal carrier to counter the cubo wagons. Good choice from the rank company. We'll see whether or not he can recover from his early downtime. At the same time, we have a nice push coming in from Lieutenant. He's going to be able to absolutely murder these Folks Grenadiers from close range with the Penals. However, there is some help coming in these Sturm Pioneers, so we'll see whether or not these Soviet troops can uh, deal with this. Looks like they managed to force back the Folks Grenadiers, and they're going to try to chase them down to get the kill, but in doing so, they leave the heavy cover that they have been able to steal from the Germans. And now, the two Cubo wagons from Con are coming in to absolutely close in the trap on these units and they're gonna have to escape with their lives or maybe not as the cube wagons chase down the poor penals and probably are gonna be able to kill them with the negative cover coming up uh, and free machine guns firing on them yeah this is not gonna go well for him he goes down same time on the right hand side we have the second player waking up and managing to get some capping power on the field and also a machine gun in the building so he's gonna be able to capture and hold that right side of the map I think pretty easily however in the center we have a nice push for the cutoff so going for the jugular by Conzio and he's gonna be able to use those glorious cube wagons uh, to continue pressuring down on uh, poor lieutenant. I mean, free cube wagon is going to capture that point very easily. And now here comes the universal carrier finally, plus, uh, yeah, the scout car I saw it earlier on from lieutenant. So we actually have some counters coming in and a second universal carrier as well coming in from the and company. Uh, are definitely going to do well against the cube wagon spam. I mean, uh, one universal carrier versus one cube wagon, as we can see right now, is going to be absolutely in favor of the universal carrier because of the extra armor that it actually has. Uh, so the Bren is going to be blazing away at the cube ball, and there's not much that these guys can do, but uh, wait for the Panzerfaust to come in. And the Panzerfaust are going to be coming in after this battle group headquarters sets up, which isn't going to be in time to save this cube wagon. It tries to escape, but there's a river, so it's going to be a little bit slowed down. The other two cube wagons are on the right hand side, shutting down this infantry section but it's not enough I mean the infantry section is actually just kind of distracting the cube wagons while uh, these two vehicles deal with the other cubal uh, speaking of which yeah the other cubal wagon is gonna be waiting for repairs back at base and uh, looks like ooh okay so the Vickers K upgraded second universal carrier absolutely demolishes one of the cubals on the right hand side and the other one is in trouble it's got its rear armor showing to the Vickers K and that's never a good idea very, very close. Yeah, lots of damage coming through, but maybe it has to be careful of Panzerfaust from this Volkskrandier squad, so it's not going to really chase all that much. 
Actually, it does chase, but only to get some suppressing fire down on these uh, Fox Grenadiers. On the left-hand side, looks like one of the Universal Carriers went down to the um, to the German infantry. Looks like a Panzerfaust was used too. Another Panzerfaust was used on the M3 Scout car. So perhaps a little bit of a mismanagement of the Universal Carrier leads to its downfall, and this M3 Scout car is likely going to follow. There is enough. Uh, of a munition stockpile to use the Panzerfaust, but these pe these penals are actually close enough to force them away. Perhaps a little bit prematurely retreating, he could have tried to finish off the clown car right now, and it's gonna get repaired by some flame engineers and become a pain in the ass for Mateus. So perhaps a little bit of an earlier play for that would have been good. Now we see perhaps a Rakenwerfer? No. Uh, of course, this is a battle group headquarters, so it's not a Rakenwerfer, it is a support gun coming through from Mateus. And on the right hand side, Oh, a Sh Panzer Shrek upgrade on the Stern Pioneers and a Panzer, not not a Panzer Werfer, a Raccoon Werfer. So Conzio pulling through, pulling through a lot of AT, which is of course uh, what he needs right now. A little bit of light AT. These Royal Engineers are gonna definitely go down to the fire of those STGs. Oh, is that a misfire? I don't think that rocket hit. That's very unfortunate, but the yeah the engineers get murdered in the water, so that's uh, a nice victory for Conzio. He's also going for enough counters to what um, Deer and Company and Lieutenant are doing. That it seems pretty good. Harassment coming through from the M3 Scott car. This is where uh, Rakenwerfer would be coming in very handy. As you can see, the Scott car can just kind of come in, do some damage, and get out along with the help of the uh, Penals. Of course, the Pinos aren't going to be able to stand up too well to these folks during years, especially with the healing and the reinforcements coming through from uh, the battle headquarters so close. So they're going to be able to just out-reinforce the enemy and come back ever stronger, forcing away the Pinos. Uh, right now, of course, the support gun is going to be helping out, but, I mean, booby trap. Oh, Overwatch. Okay, so we have Overwatch Doctrine being picked and Breakthrough Doctrine also coming through for our OKWs. That's okay. I mean, uh, yeah, Overwatch, I don't understand what Overwatch, the Overwatch craze, you may call it. I don't think it's the best possible doctrine, especially when you don't use Goliaths, as Konzio hasn't really been pulling through any of those. I mean, it would be quite useful against uh, this machine gun, for example, coming through on the flank, getting behind the building, trying to just you know, rush it before the MG can face directions uh, from where the Goliath is coming from and just blowing up the building. That would be very useful, uh, taking out that high value target. But overall, it just seems like the Brits are going to be able to use their fire superiority uh, to good effect. Although, with the Rakenwerfer coming through, this might change as the Rakenwerfer stealths up to try to deal with the um, Universal Carrier. Unfortunately, these Stern Pioneers actually kind of, you know, blow the game up before it's ready to, where it was ready. I mean, they fire on the Universal Carrier as it, yeah, you know, the Rakenwerfer was way too far away to actually finish off the Universal Carrier. So that's kind of a problem. And we have some SimCity coming through from DRN Company because he's got quite a bit of resources stockpiled. So he can go for the Bofors Akak gun. And I'm guessing he's also going to go for a mortar pit somewhere over here to actually help cover it because at this point, ooh, two. Um, two LEIGs is going to be very, very strong against the SimCity. But if they stay right here on this left-hand side where, you know, we have the Soviets who have more mobile forces, there goes a cube wagon, uh, more mobile forces, snipers, penals, engineers, then, I mean, the support guns are going to be effective against this, but they're not going to be all that strong. They're not going to really achieve any major objectives. They're just going to be picking away at enemy units that can be reinforced slowly but surely. Uh, whereas on the right-hand side, they can be used to destroy, as you can see, these two SimCity buildings that are coming in. And I'm guessing at this point that we're going to have a Royal Engineer pick because there's no advanced emplacements for the rank company. So that's going to support the SimCities the most. The Sturm Pioneers are in trouble. That's actually kind of a bad thing for Conzio because these are upgraded. And actually, they're used in a way as a bait. Uh, getting the Universal Carry in against the Rakenwerfer. Right now, the British Infantry is trying to push through, but they're very, very low on HP, and these um, these folks right here should be able to finish them off, but they retreat just in time. Barrage coming through from the Bofors, uh, who has received... Who, which has received the, of course, support of these uh, real engineers, these sappers. 
and that's going to be enough to, you know, just kind of suppress the machine gun. But of course, with the support of the mortar, this is even going to be uh, stronger because providing a little bit of recon and uh, just helping out the mortar in dealing damage to these two units. So overall, the right hand side is going to be pretty much. Uh, I guess you could say locked down by D rank company. Uh, right now, of course, the Allies are down to 300 points because of the earlier triple cap that the Germans had in place. Uh, however, now we do have a Schwer Panzer quarters protecting the center. So right now, if the Allies can just kind of hold the two extreme flanks, then they're going to be able to uh, just kind of slowly will away at the Germans. The Germans do have free support guns coming in. So in a standoff, they're going to be in a pretty good spot, but... Are they going to be enough to deal with the British SimCity? I do not know. I mean, the SimCity Plus, here comes an Allied Supply Drop. So, of course, Soviet Industry is going to be picked. Um, that's going to be all quite good in a standoff. The KV-2 is, of course, very strong in uh, kind of stalemate -y type of games. And uh, if the Allies can just kind of uh, wait for the late game and get a lot of Fireflies, get a lot of uh, SU-85s and the KV-2, then on a map like Crossing in the Woods, they could have an advantage against something like, uh, you know, King Tigers and Panzer Fours, but they're going to have to watch for Panthers, of course. But let's just kind of focus in on the now. Right now, of course, Engineer Company is picked, and so we're going to have the auto repair coming through on the um, A gun and the mortar. However, uh, the British infantry was forced away, so a little bit of a uh, weak weak force. Only two infantry sections should probably be bolstered up by something else. There goes one of the support guns, of course. Very, very strong performance coming in from the war pit, uh, helping out quite a bit in defense of the buffers. Uh, at this point, really, uh, if I was the Aaron company, I would go with uh, another engineer squad and then try to get some extra infantry because he needs a little bit of extra repair support on his uh, guns and then uh, he needs a little more infantry so that he can just kind of keep the enemy away from um, away from this area more and project his power more onto the fuel point to get a little bit of extra resources. Right now when it comes to the resources, the Allies and the Axis are pretty well even, so considering that the Allies have to recover from an earlier loss uh, in you know map control, of course because of the AFK from the Iran company, then they need to basically be even better than the Axis right now. They need to just kind of go over them in the mid game with their strong units. Of course, mid game strong units, support weapon, no, not support weapons, the mechanized armor company are uh, gonna be quite helpful with that. And right now, the company command post has been upgraded as well for D rank company. So we're gonna see probably Cromwells and probably uh, T-34s or Kachushas coming through. I would love a Kachusha right now, considering what the playstyle of the Axis is. I mean, uh, whoa, what are you doing? being a bit of a roller over here with the Universal Carrier. Yeah, overall, it seems like this push is going to be coming through for uh, the Brick player, and, I mean, once he takes out that machine gun, he's going to be fine, but the Rekenver for putting a lot of pressure down on the Universal Carrier, and the Universal Carrier is taking a lot of damage from multiple sources. It's probably going to go down in smoke and flames, and at the same time, this infantry section tries to help, but it's not enough. Again, this would be where more infantry would come into play. With 700 manpower, for D rank company, this is definitely a big issue for him. Right now, there are two snipers on the left hand side for Lieutenant, and he's going for a T3476. I would love a Kachusha once again because of all the infantry and all of the support guns, especially that the Germans are going for. The Kachusha would be very, very good in shutting these down and helping out, of course, the Sim City on the right hand side uh, without really uh, committing too many resources to it. I mean, the Kachusha is not. The most expensive unit in the game so having that extra bit of support right now while he's waiting for perhaps kv8s kv2s and uh, then going for su-85s as well would be very very strong right now the allies have a triple cap so also the katrisha would be helpful in holding that because of of course barrages just kind of falling down like a rain on a september day uh, on people that are trying to capture points but uh, right now, as you can see, the Germans are down to 400 points and they're dropping very, very quickly because of the short cap. So they need to try to do something about this. And of course, the infantry from Mateus is going to be crucial with that. He's got the Panzer Fusiliers from Breakthrough. And Kanzio uh, really is kind of struggling overall. Uh, he has, however, upgraded all of the buildings. So he might be going for the King Tiger later on. 
So that's, I think, the German strategy. Just kind of wait for the KT, wait maybe for the Jagdtiger, and just kind of try to rely on their infantry at this moment to carry through the day. There comes the 3476, which is soon going to be supported by a Katusha. So overall, quite good uh, for Lieutenant. He's in a good position. Rep Kubwagen, and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's in a good position. He's going to be able to sort of project his influence over the center and the left-hand side because of this T-3476. His problem right now is that he does not have any infantry. I mean, as the Germans are kind of relying on their infantry, the Allies are definitely struggling when it comes to that. They do have their uh, SimCity, which is now going down, actually, to the concentrated fire of these support guns so there goes the mortar which is very very much a big big loss that we're gonna see immediately being replaced uh but still um not the best possible uh position to be in for deer and company he needs to find some way to push on these support guns and that's gonna come through to infantry i mean it's just the way it goes of course also lieutenant is lacking in infantry but it's less sort of Ooh, it looks like his other mortar is going to get taken down by the infantry flank from Kanzio. But Kanzio is going to be walking into a world of hurt between the frying pan and the fire, also known as Kachusha and Bofors. And the Kachusha barrage forces them away into a retreat through the Bofors' line of fire and absolutely firing squads, an entire contingent of German infantry. So that's very, very bad. Kanzio is basically reduced to nothing and less. So he's got one Rekenver for one support gun, one MG, and one Volksgrandier squad that's kind of huddled up in a building that is going to be soon occupied by some infantry sections. So overall, not the best position to be in for him. He has, along with Mateus' support guns, managed to put a lot of hurt, however, down onto the ranks um, little sim city. And the brace is about to run out on this Wolfers uh, right now. So this is going to be very, very bad if these combat engineers can't uh, come in and actually s save with the repairs, the buffers, and also with, of course, Standfast, then this is going to be a uh, very, very terrible loss for the Brits because they might just lose this right-hand side. That would be very, very bad. They do have the free inch border, and that might just be enough, along with the self-repair, to save the buffers. In the meantime, on the center, we see uh, snipers supporting the T-3476. That's not something that you see every day. But it's working out fairly well because the snipers can deal quite well with the Raken Riffers and they can spot in incoming infantry threats. So um, that is, of course, quite okay. And also the spotting is going to be very helpful to the Kachushas. We have a second one coming through. I definitely agree with that choice, although I still think that Lieutenant should be going for some extra infantry. He's got the two snipers. Uh, having a little bit of extra infantry to help defend them would be very, very strong and also to help keep its map control or his map control very, very much on lockdown. Here comes a Katusha Barrage on a uh, target. <laughs> Does get a kill on the Storm Pioneers, but it's not enough. I mean, uh, we see a very nice push coming through from the German infantry. It looks like this poor flamethrower is going to go down, and yeah, this guy cannot actually can pick it up. I thought that if you had um, Minesweeper, you couldn't pick up flamethrowers, but it looks like that's just that if you upgrade the Minesweepers, you can't upgrade the Flamethrower, but you can still pick it up. Firefly coming through for D-Rank Company, and Jagdpanzer for Mateus. So a very defensive play coming in from both of these uh, both of these players. I'm not sure I 100% agree with this. I mean, I'm okay with the Jagdpanzer, clearly trying to bridge the gap to maybe a later uh, Jagdtier or, or Panther. That's okay. It's going to work very well against the T-3476 if it's uh, kind of just supported effectively by all of the Rakan Riffers, all of the infantry, and there's lots of that for the access on this uh, battlefield right now, so this shouldn't be too much of a problem for them, and meantime, Allied Supply Drops are just keeping... Oh, no. <laughs> of course. Um... I don't think GB, the lieutenant, is going to be too happy about that, but yeah, it was obvious. Uh, so with two Schwerpanzer quarters on the field, of course, uh, those planes aren't going to be surviving anytime soon. But lots of supply drops coming in are going to be fueling the Soviet war machine, and soon enough we're going to be seeing some KVs. So we're only four CPs away from the KV-2, the strongest tank in the game. And if that is indeed selected, I would be a very, very happy caster right now. Yeah, it seems like we have a bit of a push coming through from Mateus, but he actually mass retreats from a T-3476, which kind of leaves the sector assault being uh, 
called in by Conzio without line of sight. I mean, let's take a look. Nope, they don't see anything. So Sector Assault isn't really going to be coming in and strafing anything. Maybe going to attack that mortar pit. Wait, what? I'm pretty sure that did not hit anything. No, it destroyed the house. It's, you know, kind of turning into a pile of wood. But yeah, not not the not the best. Not the best. <laughs> Overall, it could have gone much better for our German players. If uh, more line of sight had been provided, then that sector assault would have definitely been more devastating. As it stands, it's a waste of 250 munitions. 250 munitions that could have been used on Goliaths. A couple of those to try to get some wipes off or perhaps attack these mortar pits in some way. I believe two Goliaths would be definitely be enough to destroy a mortar pit. Of course, they don't particularly need that to destroy uh, the mortar pits as they do have these massive, uh, massively damaging rather support guns. Left hand side, T3476 comes through a second T3476, a bad idea because of uh, direct, uh, Jack Panzer IV being on the field and all the AT. More T-3476s aren't going to be all that helpful. Perhaps an SU-85 would have been better. And right now, as you can see, the Jagdpanzer IV is really making all of his presence being felt. Vet-free um, folks screen, you're actually going to go down to the Katrusha Barrage. Very well placed. And the T-3476 goes down, the veterancy one. But the second one, the green T-34, is going to be coming through and trying to destroy this Jagdpanzer. The Jagdpanzer is in a very, very bad spot. The only saving race would be the Rakenwerfer, but the Rakenwerfer can't save it from the wrath of the Soviet Union destroying that uh, Yak Panzer IV. So overall a pretty good trade if this T-34 survives, but I highly doubt it. Here comes the Panzer Fusiliers who have managed to get a nice anti-tank rifle grenade on the T-34-76, damaging the engine. On the right-hand side, we have a nice push coming through for the Germans, almost destroying the free-inch mortar pit and dealing a lot of damage to the British infantry. I'm guessing that the mortar pit is going to be finished off by the LEIGs. In the meantime, the Panzer Fusiliers are about to recharge their anti-tank rifle grenade and the T-3476 is in a very, very bad way. Here comes the rifle grenade, but it actually just bounces and it does not penetrate. So that's very, very lucky. Also, an assault artillery coming through doing more damage to the Germans than it is to the Allies, and right now the T-34 might just be able to escape. It has a line straight back to the base if these two snipers were to come through and pick off these four Panzer Fusiliers, it would just take two rounds, two volleys from these snipers. That would be very, very good for the T-34. Here comes the cooldown on the anti-tank rifle, rifle grenade, so we're gonna see the anti-tank rifle grenade. Oh no! One guy survives the T-34 round and destroys the gun, and it gets gunned down by the snipers as it retreats. So, Hero of the Fatherland getting a Knight's Cross most definitely posthumously for that. And right now, on the right-hand side, we have another trap of threat overall for the Allies. So, we have the Churchill AVRE coming through. And that's going to be a lot, of, a lot of pressure on the German infantry and support weapons to be very, very much on their toes and escaping that petard mortar, 209mm, doing already a lot of damage and getting 8 kills on the first volley, or rather first mortar shot. Right now, also with the help of the Kachushas, who are now up to only 3 kills, but a little bit of um, veterancy, definitely. Ooh, destroying a, um, destroying a support gun itself, so that's very, very useful. Yeah, um, so these two Kachushas, they may not have a lot of kills under their belt, but they definitely have some damage, and they're putting a lot of pressure down on the Germans to be uh, just kind of moving their units around all the time without blobbing up and that's kind of nice. Here comes the petard, almost takes out the Storm Pioneers, but they're very, very low and the beast of machine gun on the aviary might just finish them off. So the Storm Pioneers are very, very low. Let's see if they can finish off the... No, they can't finish off the squad and here comes what I thought was gonna come in from Kanzio, the big Papa pump, the King Tiger. Strong, strong vehicle, and there's not much that the Allies can do to counter it because uh, Lieutenant didn't go for the SU-85. He's still kind of just obstinately going for the T-34-76s. I think that as soon as this King Tiger is spotted, he should switch this over to an SU-85 as much as possible. But we do have a Sherman Firefly, and Deere and Company has 400 munitions. He could upgrade these Tulip rockets right now. In fact, him not doing that is definitely a big mistake. Um, they would help out against this King Tiger very majorly, and right now the Firefly is going to start to get through with that 17-pounder. Of course, the Pinos coming through from the rear, they don't have enough resources for a Satra Charge because uh, Lieutenant went for another Supply Drop, which he didn't need. I mean, I would have I would have 
Oh, actually, you can't cancel this supply drop, right? So that's kind of unfortunate that he wasn't able to get through with that Satra charge. There was also a T-3476 coming through, so that could have uh, allowed a nice flank on the Koenigsteiger, getting the T-34 behind it when the engine was damaged, uh, just kind of blocking it from the rear and allowing the Firefly from the front to fire. Also with the Tulip rockets that have been upgraded, that would have been very devastating, but at this point, the opportunity may have passed. We do see the Yachtiger on the battlefield. So that's not the best. I mean, Yachtiger is going to be able to counter easily the Sherman Firefly because... If the Sherman Firefly ever shows up, then the Yachtiger waiting in the wings can just kind of pop in and destroy this Sherman Firefly quite easily. I mean, one round from the Yachtiger is basically going to deal half HP damage, or rather, destroy halfway the Sherman Firefly. It's going to take down the HP by about 50%, and that's, of course, not very good, because if one round is 50%, then two rounds is 100%. So. After it gets shot at, the Sherman Firefly is going to have to withdraw as quickly as possible, uh, which overall means that the Sherman Firefly's effectiveness is going to be reduced to zero, most likely. And it's not going to be able to pop in and um, plank away at the King Tiger, basically uh, unopposed as it would be right now, because, again, if the King Tiger is covered by the Yag Tiger, it's not going to be all that good for the Firefly. Another excellent Petard Mortar Fire. Uh, so, of course, the Churchill Aviary is actually... Ooh, this is very bad. That Katrusha should definitely retreat. So, the Churchill Aviary, going back to what I was saying, is a very, very useful unit. But, yeah. Unfortunately, the Katrusha goes down. Tulip Rockets also popped in against the Koenigsteiger, but it's not enough. I mean, the King Tiger is in a very secure position with the Yacht Tiger being nearby to help it. And, of course, cover it from any flanks, as we see right now. King Tiger, however, is still in a little bit of trouble because it's very, very much ahead without any infantry support. There is really no uh, infantry support on the field for the Germans, but thankfully, there's only two T-34-76s in the area that can help out the Sherman Firefly. And the Sherman Firefly alone isn't going to be able to deal with these two uh, big cats. Uh, of course, we see some Pinos coming through on the flank. They now have enough munitions for a Satra charge. Sherman Firefly is still basically available and firing in, but the Yacht Tiger is definitely going to, you know, put an end to that. Aviary comes through from the flank, which could be very, very nasty if these Pinos get a... Oh no, it fires the Petard Mortar at the Yacht Tiger instead of waiting on a Satra Charge on the King Tiger. And now that would have definitely finished off the KT had the Petard Mortar being fired at that. Uh, also, there was a Centaur? I have no idea why a Centaur has been built by D-Rank Company. I guess it's going to be useful against the almost non-existent infantry support for the Axis, but it's going to be very, very vulnerable to what is happening. So overall, uh, not the best position to be in if you're the Allies. Losing once again those T-34-76s, Katsusha Barrage going to come through on the King Tiger, which is going to, oh, actually finish it off and push it into the lake. Damn, I was not expecting that. So very, very good kill for the remaining Katsusha. Other Katrusha definitely being wasted right there, and the AVRE still being alive and still being a bit of a pain in the rear for Germans. However, they still have the Yachtiger around, so they have basically, um, as you could say, safeguard against any allied armor spell. I mean, they have the Yachtiger, they have Rakenriffers, they have Volksgrandiers. They have enough AT defenses if the Allies want to go aggressive with their armor, especially if they go with low quality, such as T-34-76s. More T-34s being built by the Lieutenant. I feel like this is a mistake. He should be going at this point for the KV-2. Uh, of course, the KV the concern for the KV-2 would be the Yacht Tiger. Uh, the Yacht Tiger counters the KV-2 quite heavily. But, I mean, going for more T-34-76s and just kind of spamming those out, I feel like would be uh, a little bit more of a, I um, guess you could say, self-defeating answer. Because if you go with more T-34-76s, you're still going to be essentially buying tanks and losing them as soon as you as soon as soon you bring them on the field. Right now, look at this T-34. It gets a nice flank off on the Yacht Tiger, but it's alone because so many T-34s have been lost in the last few engagements that there isn't really a critical mass of T-34s coming through, which is what T-34s want to see. And right now, there's a lot of AT all the way around. Even the Schwer Panzer Quarters can penetrate the armor of the T-34-76 sometimes, so providing quite a lot of damage. And the T-34 alone cannot 
DPS down the Akti are quick enough and so of course here comes the AT assets for the Germans and they're able to destroy the Yachty here. So if I were the Germans right now seeing what um, Lieutenant is going for I would go for some Panzer IVs uh, because they would be able to deal with the Tutor IVs essentially about as well as uh, any other unit. And they would be very very effective against the remaining allied infantry units and it would be a nice field presence right now instead of waiting for another king tiger which is what i fear Konzio is doing with all that resources that he's uh, all those resources that he's stockpiling i feel like that would be very very strong for him and right now another t34 coming through maybe is going to be able to finish off the act eager but uh, there's this yeah, Rekenwerfer, and the Akhtiger is very, very low, but the T-34 was firing at the frontal armor, so it was not able to finish off the, the, the Akhtiger, and the Akhtiger, along with the Rekenwerfers, put down the T-34 basically before it could do anything, and that's it's kind of kind of bad. However, on the right-hand side, the kind of defenses that the Germans had set up with Rekenwerfers, uh, machine guns, and of course a little bit of extra infantry is absolutely collapsing and even a uh, panzer shrek is going to fall to the infantry sections which is actually very very bad a panzer shrek also a rakenwerfer and a machine gun are all going to fall to the allies so that's very very bad centaur is still alive and most importantly the aviary is still alive with 19 kills this is actually what's been kind of deconstructing all of the uh, axis uh, support gun and support weapon based defenses all the way f on the right hand side of course as you can see the EVR you can just kind of pull up say oh hello I see you cannot move now you're dead and well there's not much that the Germans can do about that so really if the Germans can't deal with this AVRE then they're gonna be in a bad spot on the right hand side and the right hand side is gonna be providing essentially the time for GB the lieutenant to actually recover from his basically reckless losses that he has been sustaining finally he's going for some extra penals looks like he's lost one of the snipers but he's still got one of those snipers online that's going to be very very useful as it reaches vet free soon enough uh because the germans are also down to basically next to nothing as well i mean we have some Obersudan even from mateus so playing into the snipers because the Obersudan, well pew come on fire yep that's 25% of the Obersodan squad down. Ooh, some bombs falling through on the sniper. The sniper might want to escape. It's a negative cover against some Obersodan. So the LMG-34 gun squad is going to almost execute the snipers, but just kind of survive. We do have a Panzer IV, uh, but not from the person I was expecting it from. I was expecting it from Konzio, who is going for the King Tiger still. Uh, we see it from Mateus, and at the same time... Uh, a bit of a push from the aviary might be a little bit reckless, but there's another firefly coming through from the Orange Company, so he's in a good spot. And right now, the Yacht Tiger is almost repaired, so Yacht Tiger plus Panzer IV is going to be a very deadly combination, especially to hold down this left hand side. The allies are down to 58 VPs, so if they were to um, just kind of get the last push in, hold these two points for a while. Uh, just kind of securely with their Panzer IV and their Yacht Tiger and all of their weapons. Instead of just kind of wasting units on the right hand side, I would consolidate on the center and the left if I were the Germans, trying to get a little bit of a bearing on this fuel point. They need some way to recover their fuel, which they have lost on the right hand side, and um, switching the flank would be, I believe, the best way to go about it. And there goes the Schwer Panzer Quarters, almost it's close to dying. The C3476 could probably just kind of push in and destroy the Schwer Panzer headquarters, but there's of course the problem of both the Jagdtiger and the P4, so the P4 and Jagdtiger are gonna uh, kind of team up and the Katrusha Barrage is gonna be sent in to finish off the Schwer Panzer headquarters, also might finish off this Sturm Pioneer squad, so that's kind of evil, and there goes the uh, Schwer Panzer headquarters. There also goes a lot of German infantry on the right hand side, however there is a um, damage engine on the Churchill Aviary. So at this point, Panzer IV tries to push through the center, but the allied medium line is going to be able to hold. And yeah, uh, so if the Germans can just kind of keep the center and the left-hand side, then they're going to be in a good spot. The allies are down to 44 uh, VPs, so that would just be a few minutes of pressure from a double cap, and, you know, that would go down. 
The right hand side is basically off limits because of the Centaur and the AVRE. The Centaur absolutely murdering that Rakenver for crew and the allies are going to be able to steal that Rakenver for four themselves, which is going to be very, very helpful, not only against the Panzer IV right now, but hopefully in the future against the King Tiger. Conzio uh, with floating a lot of manpower, not the moment to float manpower. Both d -Rank Company and Conzio could definitely use some extra anti-tank guns. I mean, d -Rank Company's... Um, the Iron Company's infantry force is fitting out, but also uh, not only infantry, but a six pounder would be very, very helpful for him now that he sees that there is a uh, Panzer IV House J on the field and that he probably knows another KT is coming. Getting some extra um, anti tank defenses that aren't vulnerable to the Yacht Tiger would be absolutely uh, paramount to him. I mean, the Yacht Tiger can just kind of plop rounds into Fireflies as it pleases, but it, it can't really do anything against uh, Six Pounders unless it uses the supporting fire. And if it uses the supporting fire, then it isn't going to be firing away at the uh, tanks. And then the tanks are going to have an opportunity to come in and hopefully deal with it. And uh, now the King Tiger is coming through for Kanzio, and as you can see, he's got 500 extra manpower, so he could have spent that on perhaps our Ken Buffer and a um, Fox Grenadier squad to, of course, trying to cap right hand side luckily for him he really was left a big opportunity by d rank who hasn't uh recruited any of these weapons and just kind of left them for him so that's bad tulips coming through on the uh, tiger missing very very unlike unlikely unlucky and unlikely on the rng left hand side yeah uh so the kashisha is still pressuring the german infantry forces that's very, very strong, but the Germans are about to capture this point, so this could be bad for them. And right now, here comes the aviary on the right, and it might just try to get a pit hard on the Königstiger. It might stun it, but it does not. It only does a little bit of damage. Right now, yeah, it seems like the right-hand side is going to be falling to the King Tiger if uh, it can deal with, of course, the Sherman Firefly. But, very nice move. The Lieutenant is pushing through all of his vehicles, the free T-34 76s that he has been able to build up, on the right side. So, preparing for a big push on the right side and trying to essentially concentrate all the Allied forces into one area is exactly what they need to do against these slow, lumbering vehicles that can't really deal with their flanks without major support. So as you can see right now, there's a bit of a split. The King Tiger is over here, and the Yacht Tiger is alone. There isn't really much support over here, except these infantry squads that are kind of still replenishing. So the three T-34s are able to kind of get behind it, swarm through the German lines, and get behind the Yacht Tiger without really the Yacht Tiger putting up much of a fight. And at this point, this is the end of the Yacht Tiger. This is absolutely atrocious situation to be in for the Axis. Also, the flank coming through from the Sherman Firefly. That's an interesting choice. Ram comes through on the uh, King Tiger. This is bad. The Allies are splitting their focus on multiple vehicles. They should be focusing on only one of these two big heavy tanks and taking it down and away from the fight as quickly as possible. Looks like the uh, Sherman Firefly is still following behind. Panzer IV comes in to try to deal with the Allied infantry support, and it does. So it's successful, and the Allied tanks are now alone in the back lines of the Germans. The King Tiger is almost down. T-3476 tries to get the last remaining shot in, but it does not penetrate. Kachusha Barrage falls on the massive concentration of German forces. This could be terrible for the infantry. There goes the Yacht Tiger, and the uh, Sherman Firefly is almost able to destroy the King Tiger, but the Panzer IV, once again, proving its worth and destroying the Sherman Firefly, saving the big German heavy tank. But there's a Churchill AVRE coming through, and this is exactly what the AVRE wants to see. A big cluster of sort of impeded and uh, low health units absolutely murders the King Tiger and a lot of its repairing automatrons. So getting up to 30 kills and getting a lot of damage done. There's also a Comet on the field right now for D-Rank Company, which is going to be able to finish off this recapture D-3476. However, there's uh, the Panzer IV J. This is where the six pounders would come in, definitely, uh, trying to chase down the AVRE. But the AVRE does have a lot of HP, and the support of the Comet is definitely being felt right now. Somehow, the Comet hasn't destroyed the T-3476. But finally, here comes the uh, Reckoning, and probably going to, yeah, destroy that mercilessly. On the right side, the Centaur has been able to hold this right VP for the Allies, just kind of keeping them in the game when it comes to the VPs. Of course, they're down to 30, but as long as this right VP is uh, taken and at least one of the other VPs is neutralized, then they're going to be in a good spot. Comet goes down to the Panzer IV. So the Panzer IV really being the MVP right now. 
Aviary tries to finish it off, but it's not enough, and the Pantafor is gonna try to chase through boldly against the, um, against the Aviary. Again, it would be nice to have a 6-pounder, eh? Uh, but actually, the Centaur firing into the rear armor, doing quite a bit of damage, and there's a T-3476 coming through. Saw it on the minimap, and now is gonna show its face and probably destroy this Panzer IV. Yeah, manages to get the main gun destroyed on the Churchill Aviary, but it's not gonna be enough. And right now, the Churchill is gonna be able to kind of speed away and get some repairs. Of course, the Centaur AA tank is gonna be very, very, very much a murdering machine for all this infantry on the right side, and uh, yeah, just force them away. Luckily for the access, the Church Centaur AA tank does not have secure mode. Speaking of secure mode, because of all the T-34s have been going down, none of the T-34s have it. So that's a very, very bad uh, position to be in for the Allies. They have 25 points left, uh, and they actually have some units that are near VPs, but are not right now capturing them. Who cares about the fuel point? Just kind of send these units in and capture the VP. That's absolutely uh, what you need to do right now. It does not really matter if you're going to have enough fuel later on to build units if you're going to lose because of VPs. They're down to 16, and they're actually in a position to capture all three at once right now. So, um... Panzer Fusiliers trying to fight the Penal Battalions, but getting into the negative cover, and so they're going to be gunned down by the SVTs. Grenade almost destroys the entire squad, but a nice last-second dodge forces the Panzer Fusiliers to retreat. Also, the T-3476 comes in to support, and the center is being captured by some more Penals, whereas the right-hand side is being captured by um, some infantry sections, and, of course, the smoke comes through from the vehicle crew repairs, helping out to um, get these vehicles back up to shape. And right now... The ball is in the uh, court of the allies, so they have a triple cap going, and a nice Katusha barrage is going to be preventing or at least slowing down the capture uh, of the center by these folks grenadiers. So Katusha coming through with 25 kills, almost at vet free. There goes the entire squad, and right now the Germans are really f kind of um, feeling their infantry inferiority now for the first time in a while, and they have a lot of manpower. And a lot of resources. Why aren't they using these resources to go for some units? This is very, very puzzling. I mean, the Allies are down to 13 points, and they, the Germans are down to 261. But that's still basically less than five minutes of triple cap. So if the Allies are able to triple cap the Germans, and that was an interesting petard. If the Allies are able to triple cap the Germans, which they should be able to do considering the force disparity right now on the field, 70-70 uh, pop cap, so 140 versus basically 70, so double the pop cap, uh, they sh this should result in a triple cap. Uh, but if the Allies are able to triple cap and they're down to 11 VPs, 10 VPs, they do have the left-hand side captured, but the Sniper is going to be able to capture that, and the Center is going to be um, forced in by T-3476 to escape back to base. So, of course, the Penals are going to be able to come in and capture this VP, so that's pretty okay for them. Yeah, uh, so if the Germans can just kind of hold two VPs for a few seconds, then they're going to be able to win. And they don't really have all that much time if the Allies get their, you know, SHIT together and get a triple cap going, which they are going to be able to do right now. They're also pushing through with their uh, anti-infantry murdering squad, the Centaur and the AVRE, uh, which are now up to 32 plus 21, 54. Three? 53 kills combined. That's absolutely massive. And also right now, the C-3476 crucially reaches Ved-1 and gets the secure mode, preventing these folk strangers from capturing uh, the point themselves and also managing to get a little bit of capture in while it was waiting for some combat engineers to come through. So overall, the Germans are waiting for another KT, I'm guessing, and another Yacht tier. That's definitely a mistake. I mean, as you can see... Uh, they would do very, very, you know, much better with a Panzer IV now rather than a King Tiger later. And there's a bit of a saying in Italy. I'm not sure if there's something in English that's basically similar. It's best to have a neg now than a chicken later. You know, chicken tomorrow. A hen. I guess you could. I, I guess it's better to say a hen tomorrow. You know. Uh, 
Oh, damn, that was devastating. So the AVRE once again proving its worth, wiping out a Folk Grandier squad. And right now, these two T34s are in a bad way because of the Resurrection Verfers, but they're still going to be able to, with the secure mode, stop the capture. And uh, along with the support, of course, of this Vickers machine gun, which is very, very good. So two Vickers right now covering two VPs is exactly what the allies need to do. And that's pretty nice. However, the left-hand side is going to be captured by the um, Obersuldan Horde. So that's okay, but it's going to be forced away by the AVRE. So, of course, this AVRE just being massive in holding this left-hand side. And along with the sniper, it's going to be able to force away this Folk Stranger squad. In fact, forcing them away into, you know, heaven or hell. Whatever. Not sure if these guys were sinners. I mean, they're Folk Stranger, so probably they are sinners. <laughs> in their youth, they did uh, commit some Panzer Shrek abusing sins, most likely. And yeah, uh, it seems like the allies are just going to be able to secure the center and the left-hand side. And because of that, uh, get the win through. Of course, T-34-76 easily able to push through. And there's no AT on the field for the Axis. Where are the Rakenwerfers from all this 900 manpower that you have, Matthias? I mean, there's only one Rakenwerfer coming through. That's not enough to deal with all of the anti-infantry that is coming through for the allies. Conzio even with 210 fuel. Where's your Panzer IV? Where's your Panfer to deal with the AVRE? Somehow they have decided that waiting for the King Tiger while the enemy has, you know, a massive superiority over them and even a KV Flamethrower coming through right now is a good decision. Uh, so the KV Flamethrower once again uh, definitely playing into that philosophy of let's get things that are good now and they're gonna make us win the game now rather than wait for something that maybe is gonna be very strong later. Instead of waiting for the KV-2, um, he goes for the KV-8 flamethrower tank which is gonna be absolutely a, a murdering machine against the infantry. Just like we saw uh, d and company go with the AVRE and the Centaur which was much more effective than I would have, would have you know, expected. Yeah, uh, the KV Flamethrower is going to be very, very effective against these Obersoldan and pushing them away from the VPs crucially and allowing the Penals to capture these basically un unopposed. I mean, there goes the Veterancy, uh, Veterancy 1 Obersoldan. And right now we see the, ja the Jagdtiger being on the field. And the Jagdtiger is going to be very strong, of course, against the KV Flamethrower. But with no infantry support and no map control and no VPs, and a triple cap and only 160 points to go. This is a little over two minutes of triple cap. What is the Yachty you're going to be able to do? I mean, it can barely fire a few rounds in two minutes because of the high reload time. This is a unit that needs a lot of time to be effective and cost effective, especially. Uh, with the amount of price that you paid for this thing, you could have gone with a Panther and... Uh, like a couple of infantry squads or perhaps an, an infantry squad and an MG or something to hold one of the points uh, Or it, even a couple of Panzer IV as well. Not really a couple of Panzer IVs, but close to a couple of Panzer IVs Instead you went for a Jagdtiger which destroys the Comet, forces away uh, the AVRE and the um, heavy flamethrower tank but I mean What's that gonna do? I mean, you don't have any infantry, and even if the infantry comes through, there's the sniper that is just gonna pick off your Obersoldan. And what are you gonna do about that? Shoot it with the Jagdtiger? You know, if you had a Panzer IV, you could just come in and murder the sniper. <laughs> just as simple as that. Uh, and even over here, oh look, you have dealt with all the vehicles. Uh, oh look, there's a Vet 2 Vickers that is destroying all your infantry, and there's nothing you can do about it, because, oh look, you're Conzio, and instead of going for a Panzer IV or a Panther, and going for some infantry, that way you can flank the MG, uh, and, you know, get some actual vehicles that can push in and deal some damage to it, instead of doing that, you're waiting for the King Tiger whenever you have 75 points and your enemy has Eight. So it's down to the wire. You need something that's useful right now, and instead you go with waiting for a late game unit. That is definitely the big mistake that the Germans are making right now, and is going to cost them the game, I'm guessing. So last hurrah for the Germans. In the center, we see the 7G-34 tries to push through. A nice push from the infantry on the left-hand side, but very good usage of not only the AVRE, but also the Vickers machine gun, and... Um, 
you know, the infantry just kind of coming in and body blocking these Panzer Fusiliers from getting the cap off is going to be enough to stop this infantry push just long enough for the uh, vehicles to be repaired. And here comes the T-3476 ram through, uh, damages the engine, actually very lucky, once again damages the engine with the ram on the Yachtiger, and tries to push through, of course, with the KV flamethrower on the flank, dealing with the infantry, uh, the infantry recapturing the point, although somehow it's empty, and right now the Comet and the T-3476 are gonna come through into the rear of the Yachtiger and finish it off, with only 39 points left, this is gonna be the end, of course, the engineers are gonna capture the VP and get a triple cap going once again, the Octiger is in trouble and it is going to be in essentially a very, very, very bad spot because of the Comet being into its rear. There's no AT support except these two Raken Werfers, which again, what if you would have had a little bit of extra support? That would have been very good for you. AVRE comes through, also manages to get some shots in. Comet murders the last remaining Raken Werfer crew, twisting the knife in the wound and putting an end to the German hope of basically doing anything else uh, and yeah this is gonna be the end of the game so i want to thank y'all for watching i hope you have enjoyed as always the link to, for sending in replays to me is in the description you can always do that you're always welcome to do that and i hope i'll see you soon so overall quick recap mm, kind of a bad usage of the resources in the late game for the germans i mean they pushed in very very aggressively early on but then in the later game they just kind of tunnel vision for this big big um german tanks that of course i mean they're very effective but um whenever the allies are just kind of running you over now uh maybe you want something to deal with that ah war paint uh, maybe you want something to deal with that rather than waiting for, uh, you know, something that might be very, very effective later, but that isn't going to be, uh, isn't going to be the best thing at all at this very moment, because, hey, uh, what use is basically resources that are in the bank right now? Not much, and that's really the problem that the Axis had to deal with, and that brought them to this kind of unfortunate loss, even though they were very, very close to winning, they played well, that was just simply not enough. So I want to thank y'all for watching, I hope you have enjoyed this cast, and I'll see you soon.